Hello everybody, it's John again with another drive-by devotional here at Grace, Liberty, and the finished work of Jesus Christ. Thank you guys for driving along with me whenever I do these and sitting in with me when we talk about other things, you know, while we're not driving. We're going to talk a little bit about church again. Um, we did church recently, we're going to do it again. There's a lot to talk about concerning church. And today we are going to talk for about five minutes or so about Revelation 3.20. So Revelation 3.20 says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone comes to the door and lets me in, I will sup with him. Um, so this verse has been taken far out of context. A lot of times. It's used as a salvation verse a lot. Uh, however, it is not a salvation verse. Uh, that doesn't mean Jesus isn't knocking on the doors of our hearts, but this verse is not a salvation verse. This verse is in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. And Jesus is talking to the church of Laodicea. And my question is, one... If it is a salvation verse, in context it's not, but let's say it is. <laughs> Why is Jesus have to knock on the door for the church to be saved? And two, most importantly, why is he knocking on the door of the church at all? Why is Jesus not in the church? Because, my friends... In a lot of cases, especially nowadays, much like Elvis, Jesus has left the building. Or, maybe it's better put this way, Jesus was kicked out of the building. The fact is, okay, that God, a lot of times, is only a figurehead in church, especially nowadays. The fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 are this. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. The church a lot of times has become about rules, morals, uh, about hate and hating. Now, I'm not saying there aren't things that are right. There aren't things, there are things that are, are, you know, are wrong. Of course there's right and wrong. But our goal as a church is to not teach the law because also in Galatians it tells us that the law is a schoolmaster teaching us that well we need Jesus we can't do it on our own we can't keep the law and so what we find uh, is a church that well, it's full of hate, full of condemnation and judgment. And also in Galatians 6, 7, and 8, things done in the flesh produce corruption. Things done in the spirit produce life. In other words, the church becomes corrupt. In a lot of cases, the church has become corrupt. Holding people to standards that they can't keep themselves. And in the process, causing more damage and pain. Now, my friends, let's get a little bit of encouragement here. This is where you and I come in. You and I can work together. We can break down denominational and organizational boundaries and say, hey, 
We are believers in Jesus Christ. We're members of his body. We can work together. Because one of the characterizations of the end times, um, I mentioned this in our previous video, is people will lose the love and their hearts still grow cold. And, well, the church, unfortunately, is not helping that cause. I'm not anti-church. Church, church uh, when done right, is important. But there's one church, one body. And let us love one another. Let us represent Jesus. Um, and all of those fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Because if those things are being manifest, well, then the Holy Spirit ain't there, and the Holy Spirit is God, and so is Jesus. And this, my friend, is why we see a lot of Jesus knocking on the door trying to get in. Jesus is not in the church. His name may be in the church. His image may be in the church. His words may be in the church. But in a lot of cases, my friends, he is not in the church. So, let's work together. Let's invite Jesus in. And see that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and all the rest. Let's see lives change. God bless, my friends. And thanks for driving with me.